An attempted coup by the military sparks turmoil in Turkey, and questions are being raised tonight about who's now in charge. A fire destroys a home in a Lexington neighborhood, why investigators are now calling it suspicious. A family emergency left a four-year-old boy on the line with 911. With his grandmother being unresponsive, she wasn't able to help us either. What dispatchers want you to do to help them reach you in an emergency fast. This is WKYT News at 11. Good Friday evening to you. A line of storms slowly moved across parts of the bluegrass tonight. But is better weather moving in for the weekend? We begin tonight with our chief meteorologist Chris Bailey and your no wait weather forecast. The short answer to that is yes, but of course, when you're comparing the weather to where we have been over the past few days, anything that doesn't feature just daily thunderstorms is an improvement. That's what we've got coming up for Saturday, Sunday, late evening. Defender radar network on your Friday. Thunderstorms rolling out of Kentucky for a change, and we're not tracking any additional rounds of big boomers out there. We have a cold front that is right on top of the Ohio Valley now. It is slowly working its way toward the south. See a little area of some rain west of Nashville. Some of that will hug parts of southern Kentucky overnight and into early tomorrow morning. The future radar, hour by hour, still. Trying to throw a little light shower into parts of central and eastern Kentucky early tomorrow morning. Once we get into the afternoon, things will begin to improve somewhat. But yes, anyone is going to be fair game for at least an isolated shower or storm first half of the day. Maybe one of those days to where we keep some clouds around into the early afternoon, then all of a sudden you get to four or five o'clock. Uh, skies begin to brighten up a little bit. And overall, it is a much better look for the weekend. Hour by hour forecast shows the improvement. But I get back at 11:13. Tonight, it's still not clear who is in control in the country of Turkey hours after the military launched an apparent coup. At one point, the military claimed to have fully seized control of the country, and loud explosions were heard in the capital of Ankara. A prosecutor says 42 people have been killed in the attempted coup, but Turkey's prime minister now says more than 100 people have been arrested in the coup plot, and the government is gaining control. Brooke Silva Braga has the latest in our top story at 11. Elements of the Turkish military say they have fully seized control of the country. Tanks surrounded the Istanbul airport. Bridges connecting the city were shut down. President Recep Erdogan, away on vacation, called into Turkish television and urged people to take to the streets in opposition to the attempted coup. Many did, as shots rang out across Istanbul late into the night. Erdogan is a controversial figure, seen as authoritarian by many secular Turks, but fiercely supported by others and repeatedly elected. It was unclear how much of the military had revolted, but the group portrayed themselves as liberators, writing that they had acted to reinstall the constitutional order, democracy, human rights, and freedoms. The White House released a statement saying the president and secretary of state, John Kerry, quote, agreed that all parties in Turkey should support the democratically elected government. Large crowds gathered into the early morning, some cheering and others denouncing, a night that left Turkey in uncertain hands. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. Turkey's president was elected in 2014. The country's legislators have been called in for an emergency meeting to be held Saturday. Three days of mourning have started in France for the 84 people killed in the terror attack yesterday in Nice. And memorials for the victims are showing up around the world. Police say a French citizen who was born in Tunisia plowed a truck into crowds of people gathered for a Bastille Day celebration. Police later shot and killed him. They say the man was not on any terror watch list. Two Americans, Sean Copeland and his 11 year old son Brody from Texas, were killed in the attack. Lexmark says Copeland was one of their employees. Months after a fire heavily damaged a Lexington home, it caught fire again tonight. And investigators now say it was set on purpose. There's not much left of the home on Mulberry Drive in the Wood Hill neighborhood. Lexington police say they took someone into custody not long after the fire. Garrett Weimers tracking the investigation new at 11. Firefighters say flames were shooting through the roof when they first got out here. It's the second time in just five months that the same house here has caught fire. The battalion chief says the home here was boarded up ever since it caught fire back in February. 
He says the house is scheduled to be demolished this coming Monday. There was nobody inside the home, but the homeowner was here. He was out in the yard when it happened. When crews arrived, they had to fight the fire from the outside because the house was boarded up. When we got here, it was through the roof, heavily involved with fire. It was a defensive fire for us, meaning we fought the fire from the exterior. Firefighters called an arson investigator to the scene. A couple blocks over on Wood Hill Drive, investigators had in handcuffs a man we're told they were questioning about the fire. A fire like this on this side of town is pretty uncommon in this neighborhood uh, for the time of day, especially. Uh, the fire, it was pretty well advanced upon our arrival, and that's uncommon. Neighbors say they were pretty upset by what happened out here. Thankfully, though, the fire did not spread to any other houses. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Now, minutes ago, Lexington police say they did arrest the man they were questioning. He's been charged with disorderly conduct and assault. And police say the fire department plans to charge him with arson. Firefighters say there was enough space, though, between the homes to keep that fire from spreading. New tonight, police have canceled an Amber Alert for an Arkansas girl after they say she was found safe in Illinois. Police say three-year-old Layla Munholland's mother, Chelsea, kidnapped her from a home in Van Buren, Arkansas, early this morning. They say the mother does not have custody of the child. At one point, police thought they were headed here to Lexington, but because Chelsea has family in this area. But about an hour ago, police say that Layla and her mother were found along Interstate 64 near the Illinois-Indiana border. They say the child is safe and the mother is in custody. A Lexington woman suffered a medical emergency at her home today, and first responders say her four-year-old grandson came to the rescue. They say the boy used a cell phone to call 911, but the problem, it took longer than normal for first responders to get to the home because the boy wasn't sure of the address. As Kristen Kennedy tells us, first responders have an important message for anyone with a cell phone. When a four-year-old called 911 Friday, dispatchers had a hard time finding him. Although he had been taught addresses before the family had recently moved. 911 director Robert Stack says the boy was alone with his grandmother and she needed to get to a hospital fast. With his grandmother being unresponsive, she wasn't able to help us either. They were on Michigan Street, but dispatchers couldn't pinpoint what home. The boy was using a cell phone, not a landline. If he'd been on a landline, we would have known the exact address. Battalion Chief Todd Reese says his crew spent almost 15 minutes looking for his home. I don't know the exact times that it normally takes us, but it's probably three to five minutes on most calls. Precious minutes that mean a lot in an emergency. A cellular calls are not the same as a call from a landline or home phone because they don't present exactly where you're at every single time. So they do present a challenge. One way Stack is trying to tackle that challenge is with this site, smart911.com. When you sign up, you can give dispatchers your address and information about your children or your pets. So if anyone calls 911 from your phone, those operators have all the information they need to get to you. With so few people having landline phones anymore, it's really important to register phones with smart911.com so we know more about where we're sending responders. First responders did find the family, and they did take the boy's grandmother to the hospital. In Lexington, Christine Kennedy, WKYT. Crews were not able to comment on the grandmother's condition. Smart 911 is a free program, and we have a link on how to sign up for it on our website, WKYT.com. Tomorrow, many people will gather at a central Kentucky park to raise money for the family of a Marine who recently died. 34 year old Ricky Borders was from Powell County. Investigators say he died in a gun accident last month while on vacation in Florida. After serving in the U.S. Marines, Borders became a mixed martial arts fighter. A softball tournament being held at Lake Reba in Richmond tomorrow will raise money for Borders' wife and three children. One of Borders' closest friends helped organize it. Just a, just a small token for all the things he did for me. He uh, took me in from day one, always been there for me anytime I needed him. Just want to do something small to help out. The tournament will begin at 9 tomorrow morning. 11 teams will compete. Concession sales during the tournament will also be donated to the Borders family. Some people in a Frankfurt neighborhood woke up this morning to find things had been stolen from their cars. The police say is responsible in nine minutes. And then how police in Montgomery County say a group of people use Craigslist and Facebook to rob unsuspecting victims. Hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. 
We've had a lot of rain across the bluegrass state again this week. We're five for five with at least some afternoon and evening waves of thunderstorms this work week. Can we put an end to it for the weekend? For the most part, I'll say yes. For the most part. Got a new hour by hour that's a little interesting. I'll show you that here in just a second. Let's get into your late Friday evening thermometers. Where it has rained, it is into the low 70s, even a few upper 60s. Folks that didn't get a whole lot of rain, some mid to upper 70s. On par with last night in a few spots, we're a couple of degrees cooler because of the rain cool air, Lexington and Frankfurt. Bluegrass region had some big time boomers blowing in a little earlier. Defender radar network for now, nothing going on. Still one more little round of some light rains around Nashville. That may skirt into southern Kentucky, but look at the cloud cover that's out across southern parts of Indiana. Illinois, Western Kentucky. Cold front on top of the area. Those clouds are going to be with us early tomorrow morning. So if you wake up tomorrow and you're looking outside, you got a lot of clouds, be patient. You get deeper into the afternoon, and the better the chance to see some sunshine. Most thermometers should be low in mid 80s. Humidity levels will be down. It will feel much more comfortable second half of the day into tomorrow evening with temperatures that will be dropping towards 70. Let's break down the three-day forecast and a couple of changes based on some of the late evening computer runs. Storm or two possible tomorrow. That hasn't changed. Southern, southeastern Kentucky, you have the best chance of picking up on a little light rain. Farther north you go tomorrow, the better. A mainly dry day on Sunday. I say a mainly dry day, and I'll show you why in just a moment, that I'm not calling it completely dry potentially. Normal July temperatures will be noted. As we go into Monday, storms return to the area. Some of those may be a bit on the strong side. So Monday is looking a little stormier now. Hour by hour forecast. This is brand new, just in over the past five minutes. Had a sneak peek at it before you get it. Let's look at it together now. Noon tomorrow, temperatures upper 70s to low 80s. Notice how we get to 5 o'clock into the afternoon. Skies do begin to improve. How about your Saturday evening? Give it up for Saturday evening. Looking good, finally. Get out, out and enjoy it. Sunday morning, a little fog out there. Temperatures into the afternoon, into the steamy mid to upper 80s. But you're noticing on this run, and I looked at a few other runs similar to this model that are also trying to speed up a little cloud cover. And then by Sunday evening, it's got an isolated shower thunderstorm chance. Then by Monday, it's got a couple of waves of thunderstorms dropping in. And in between those waves, temperatures may make a run toward 90 or the low 90s. If that happens, that line of thunderstorms that comes in late Monday into Monday evening could be strong or locally severe. And then another little line would drop in on Tuesday. So you notice those changes. And it's two computer models I've looked at this evening that both have the exact same changes for Sunday night into Monday with a threat for a shower or thunderstorm. So I'm glad we already had the thunderstorm chances in there on Monday and then into Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Let's focus on the positive. We go into the weekend and things do look a whole lot better. <laughs> That's the key. That is We're the key. with you on That's that, brother. That's right. It's about time I had something positive. <laughs> Thanks. Well, right, it's a classic car. Some more than 100 years old will be on display at Keeneland this weekend. A preview of that in eight minutes. With the latest news on WKYT.com, join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Tonight, police in Frankfurt have charged a group of teenagers they say stole items from unlocked cars overnight. And investigators say a retired police officer stopped the teenagers. New tonight, Sabira Rayford talked to people in the neighborhood. Our neighborhood is pretty safe. You know, we very seldom have any problems. But last night, that was not the case. Police say a group of teens broke into several cars in the Indian Hills neighborhood. It just so happened that uh, somebody heard something outside, and that person that heard it happened to be a retired police officer. The former officer stepped outside and confronted a group of teens going through a neighbor's car. Police say the teens have been going around the neighborhood looking for unlocked cars. They're going through these things and taking anything of value out of them that they can maybe turn around and get rid of. Police say when getting out of your car to always remove things of value and to always lock your car. They took a couple small things like a battery charger for my phone, just invaded my privacy. Michael Gilreef says not too long ago he made the mistake of not locking his car door. He says he always pulls his car in the driveway and thought it would be safe. You just feel violated. I mean, it's like, why me? I mean, I mean, it was little stuff, but it's still, I paid for it with my own money. That's why I work. 
next door. <laughs> David Armstrong says he's prepared if someone tries to violate his space. I've got a concealed carry weapon and I've got my weapons close by if I need them. In Frankfurt, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Now, Frankfurt police asked people living in the Indian Hills neighborhood to check their cars to see if they're missing anything. Police say they've recovered many of the stolen items and they want to return them. Police in Mount Sterling have arrested three people. They say use social media to find people to rob. Jonathan Garrett, Nathan Miller, and Amber Duncan face robbery and kidnapping charges. Police say the suspects made contact with their victims through Craigslist and Facebook yard sale groups. They say the suspects had the victims come to them before robbing the victims and threatening them with violence if they called 911. They did actually physically restrain uh, using uh, ropes to tie up some of their victims and we now have a new victim that's come forward that says that they were physically assaulted as well. Police say they found six victims so far. All of them lived outside Montgomery County, but police think there could be more victims. New tonight, Somerset police have arrested a man they say impersonated an officer. They say they received a call Wednesday night that someone was looking through vehicles on North Vine Street. When they arrived, police say the suspect, 36-year-old Lonnie Cheney, had a plastic vanity badge in his wallet. Witnesses say Cheney showed the badge to three different people when trying to take their vehicles. Police say Cheney claimed he was an undercover officer and needed a vehicle for an investigation. More than a hundred collector cars and motorcycles will be on display at Keeneland this weekend. And tonight, fans received a preview of the annual Concourse to Elegance with the Hangar Bash at Bluegrass Airport. It was held inside the DGY Hangar. Concourse features cars from 1908 through 2016. And the featured class, Chrysler cars through the ages. Concourse will be held tomorrow at Keeneland's Keene Barn. It runs from 9 until 4.30. The second half of the baseball season starting tonight. Former Wildcat is back in the bigs. We'll show you what Luke Maley did tonight. And Mark Stoops talking about the guy he'll be depending on a quarterback this season, Drew Barker. Stay with us. Sports is next. Drew Barker getting ready to begin his first full season as the Cats starting quarterback, and he will certainly carry a lot of weight on his shoulders this fall. Mark Stoops likes what he has seen in Barker since the end of last season. He says he's seen tremendous growth. Stoops says Barker is coming off his best effort in the classroom on the Dean's list, and he loves his demeanor. He says there's nothing fake about him. I, I can't stand people that are fake. You know, if you may like me or not like me, but I try to just be who I am, and and I like our players to do that. And just because you're the head or the other, you're the head coach, or if you're the starting quarterback, you can't you you know the fake rah rah and all that stuff doesn't 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 hold you know doesn't hold any water. Our players they'll see right through that, and I just like his approach. I like the way he's working. He does have command. He does have respect because of what he's doing and how he's doing it. Yesterday, Boom Williams was named the Doak Walker Award watch list. Today, he was named third team All-SEC at SEC Media Days. Boom is the only U.K. player recognized on any of the preseason teams, offense, defense, or special teams. Boom ran for 855 yards in 10 games last season for the Cats. The EKU Colonels picked to finish second in an OVC preseason poll. The media members selecting Jacksonville State as the unanimous choice to win the conference. Colonels are second, followed by Eastern Illinois, UT Martin, Southeast Missouri. EKU opens the season September 3rd at Purdue. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady says he will stop fighting his suspension for deflate gate and he will miss the first four games of the upcoming season. Jimmy Garoppolo is expected to start for New England in the September 11th season opener against Arizona. The next three are against Miami, Houston and Buffalo. Scal LaBissiere having another good summer league game this afternoon for the Kings. Here goes Scal backing into the lane. He throws in the hook. He has 17 at this point. And very late in the game, Scal showing a lot of confidence as he turns baseline and hits again. He finished with 19 points, five rebounds. The Spurs won in overtime, 90 to 86. 
Rain and wind for the second round of the Open Championship at Troon, but Phil Mickelson was able to continue his good play. This is his tee shot of the par 3 8, the postage stamp green, and it came so close to a hole in one. Mickelson with a 2 under 69, he is 10 under for the tournament. Henrik Stenson moved up the leaderboard today, coming out of the bunker at 16. Stenson with a 6 under 65. He missed a birdie putt at 18 that would have tied him for the lead. And Zach Johnson chipping for birdie at number four. This one does go in. Johnson shot 70. He is five shots back. Mickelson, one ahead of Stenson at the midway point. J.B. Holmes had another good round, a one under 70. He is tied with Dustin Johnson, eight shots off the lead. On to baseball. The Legends back home tonight to open a series against Asheville, leading 2-0 in the third. Martin Gasparini coming through with the RBI single, 3-0 Legends. Then on the seventh, Ben Johnson gets a hold of one. He connects deep to left center, just to the right of the WKYT sign. And that one's gone. Fourth home run of the season for Johnson. The Legends come home. They pick up an 8-5 to five win tonight. And the Reds starting the second half of the season against the Brewers. Adam Duvall, a drive to left. Looked like it was gone. It was not. Hit the top of the wall. A run in to cut the Milwaukee lead to 3-2. to two. Tucker Barnhart then delivered in the clutch. He gets it just fair down the left field line. Two run score. And the Reds go in front four to three. They hang on to win in the ninth. The final is 5-4. And former Wildcat Luke Maley got called up today to the Tampa Bay Rays to begin the second half of the season. Maley promptly delivering a two-hit night, an RBI single there, and a good night for Luke Maley, although the Rays didn't win the game. Stay with us. We'll wrap it up. We'll be right back. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is less than a minute away here on WKYT. Tonight's guests include Charlie Rose, Gail King, and Nora O'Donnell. The whole morning crew is yeah. up late tonight. It's our chance. I know. Maybe yeah. we'll get our call. <laughs> Are we up next? <laughs> Rob leading the way? Uh, why not, huh? I'm game. Let's do it. All right, we don't want to do it this weekend, guys, because we actually have some good weather coming in, all right? So you got to hold off until next week. Uh, temperatures tomorrow, 85 degrees, a morning shower, a little cloud cover, better into the afternoon. Sunday's a mainly dry day, 88. We'll hit 90 on Monday ahead of some thunderstorms that crash the party again. All right, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We hope you have a great weekend. Take care.